Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Glenn Corbett, Lynn Marta, special guest star Nina Foch. Tonight's episode, Divorce Murderer Style. What's so interesting? That marvelous looking waiter. You used to have a figure like that, didn't you, Charlie? Are you telling me I'm getting fat? Oh, no, just comfortable. Like a friendly old overstuffed chair. You were so beautiful when I first met you. What do you want from me? Another 50 yard run, I suppose. The crowd yelling and the bands blaring. Nobody can be a football hero forever. You have to look for other values in a man. Let me write that down. Stop it, Linda. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'll tell you a secret. What? I'm divorcing you. Uh, I... I can't live without you. Charlie, please. Now, if we can't be kind, let's at least be honest. When you married me for what my family could give you. Fat, vice presidency in the firm. And a shelf for your trophies. I guess you've said it all. No, I'm really sorry it ended this way. No, I really am sorry. Where's the attendant? He'll be here in a minute. Well, I don't want to wait a minute. your cash. The lady, all your jewelry. Move. I do all right? Yeah, but we gotta make it look real good. Hold still, I'll just crease you a little bit.
的。When the family phoned of my niece's death, I flew home immediately. It's hard to believe that anyone so beautiful and vital is gone. I practically raised that girl. I arranged her coming out party. Always saw that she met the right people. May I get you something? Some tea, perhaps? An aperitif. Our stock is kind of low. Uh, we've got a little bourbon. That'll be fine. I'll have the usual, Betty. Yes, Linda was my greatest achievement. I'll never forget the first time I took her to Paris. Such fun explaining to everyone that we weren't sisters. I planned a marriage for her with an Italian count. I was heartbroken when she insisted on marrying Charles. Why was that? Ah, it's all very well to watch a football player scratch around in the muck, but you don't invite one into your house. But I forgave her. She was really in love with Charles, and he had some nice qualities. Mr. Roche, why are you suspicious about your niece's death? Thank you. Oh, there's an old French saying. Où il y a le triangle, il y a souvent... La Mort. Well, roughly, I suppose that translates into where there's a triangle, there's death. What kind of a triangle? But Linda had an admirer. He was mad about her, furious that she wouldn't leave Charles. Seems like what you're saying is that what happened the other night was more than just a robbery. I can't be sure, but isn't it true that each man kills the thing he loves? Especially in California. He more likely to kill the husband. Well, he must have realized that Linda would have an admirer. She was so beautiful. All due respect, ma'am, uh, this is pure conjecture. Yes. But Linda did say he said something very dramatic. If I can't own you, no one will. Yeah, that is pretty strong. Do you have any idea who this admirer might be? No, oh, Linda never told me. She did say, though, that he was subject to fits of violence. Oh, Mr. Jones, do find out what really happened. Charlie, I know it's no comfort at a time like this, but what we all wanted to say, what a brave thing you did. Putting yourself in danger, trying to save Linda. It's hard to imagine going on without her. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Maybe get away. That's a good idea. Take all the time you need. Don't worry about the job. Your desk will always be there. Oh, I don't think you know my daughter, Terry. Miss Mabry. I'm sorry to meet you under these circumstances, Mr. Court. I've always been one of your greatest fans. Well, if you'll excuse me. Is there anything else we can do? No, I just want to be alone for a while. Mr. Court? Yes? This is Mrs. Wilson. Who? The wife of the man you killed. I think you and I should have a little talk. Charlie Court and his wife here often? Yes, sir. Mrs. Court had lunch here frequently. That's so. Who with? 
She was accompanied by other ladies, sometimes. You mind telling me about the time she wasn't? She might have eaten alone. That's hard to picture. She may have been with a gentleman, if that's what you're suggesting. But I honestly can't recall. If you'll excuse me, sir. You hear any of that? It's possible that he doesn't remember the guy. You sound like you do. Mainly just the car. It's kind of uh, beat up for a place like this. Always had it stuffed with paintings, wild, modern stuff. You know anything else about him? Well, thin, good looking. Oh, and a lousy tipper. But he certainly wasn't the one that killed Mrs. Court. Have they identified the mugger yet? His name's Frank Wilson, drifter, got a record, armed robbery. Oh, the minute I spotted him, I should have run him off. He was here before? Earlier that evening, down by the edge of the lot. Where? I'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. Just about right down in here. Like he staked himself out for quite a while. You see the whole parking lot from here. Must have been waiting for the right victim. Why? Why what? Why wait? Seems to be anybody coming out of there been rich enough to rob. He couldn't buy a glass of cold water in there for less than $100. Hmm. Was there a lot of traffic at that time of the night? Sure. It's about closing time. You know, it seems odd that he would let some pigeons go by and Wait to pick on Charlie Court. I wouldn't want to tackle anybody that big, even if I was packing a gun. Mr. Court. Forgive me for being nervous, but Frank's death was such a shock. They never told me Wilson had a wife. Yes. Won't you sit down? We didn't live together too long. He was always wandering around getting into trouble. What do you want? Well, first to tell you that I hold no hard feelings towards you, and that I hope you won't hate me for some things I have to tell you. Go on. Frank visited me last week up in Fresno. He wanted a reconciliation. I'd always refused him until he could straighten himself out and prove a good husband. This doesn't concern me. Well, he gave me some money. He said it was an advance from a friend in L.A. who offered him a job. Now, this sent me to wondering, what kind of a job gives advances? I mean, wouldn't you wonder? I thought he'd gotten in with the wrong people again, and I wanted to find out who. So I did something terrible. I searched his things, and I found your name and phone number. Well, that doesn't prove anything. Only that he was setting me up for a robbery. Of course not. And the fact that, that you and Frank were friends before the robbery doesn't prove anything either. I never saw your husband before last night. Oh, I don't blame you for not remembering. It was such a long time ago, wasn't it? In North Carolina? A place called Cherry Point? I, I guess you forgot to tell the police. So did you, evidently. I don't want to get involved in anything. I just would like to get away from all these terrible memories. That's a very good idea. I have a sister in Hawaii. 
But it's so expensive there. How expensive? Oh, oh I couldn't think of making a move like that without, without at least $5,000. You wouldn't know where I could borrow it, would you? Maybe. Suppose I call you later this afternoon. I'd like that. Just ask for room 18. Talk to you later, then. How'd it go? I think we bought him too cheap. Well, you can always raise the ante. Send him in. Hi. May I uh, help you? Mr. Jones, is it? Barnaby Jones. I'm a private investigator. What are you investigating? Mr. DeRoche has some suspicions about your wife's death. And Eleanor? What suspicions? Well, uh, she had the feeling that there could have been some other criminal involved besides Wilson. Well, I'm not surprised she'd say that. She sees every criminal in the country under a mattress. What does that prove? Either that she sleeps in a very large bed, or uh, you're saying she's eccentric. She's wasting her money on your time, Mr. Jones. Free country. You mind if I ask you a few questions about your wife's murder? What can I tell you I haven't told the police? It was a simple robbery. I've been investigating robberies for a number of years, and I don't recall one which was exactly simple. What could be so unusual about this one? Well, the mechanics were a little peculiar. Why stage a robbery like that in such a public place? Criminals do stupid things. Amateurs, maybe, but uh, Wilson was a professional. And the evidence seems to indicate that he was in that parking lot for quite a while. Why did he single you out? I don't think he was being selective. He was probably just working up his nerve. Speaking of nerve, it took quite a bit of courage for you to jump an armed man like that uh, over a simple robbery. Why'd you do that? I don't know. It was dumb. Maybe it was the drinks I'd had. I guess I'll regret it the rest of my life. I understand your wife was uh, a great art collector. Yeah, she was interested in art. All these seem to be by the same man, Lawrence Whitley. Never heard of him. Well, not many people have. My wife sponsored him. She thought he had potential. So it looks like he dug it up out of the bottom of a hen house. If you don't have any more questions, Mr. Jones, would you excuse me? This whole thing's been very rough on me. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Hello? Everything's ready, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, Mr. Court. I'm so grateful. I really am. But... But what? Well, I've been thinking, and... Uh, $5,000 really doesn't go very far these days. See, I'd, I'd like to establish a really solid financial base. So I wouldn't have to bother you again. How solid a base? Well, could you see your way to 20000 it's a long way, isn't it? Well, not if it's the end of the line. I wouldn't impose any further. You've been so kind. Well, I don't want to be seen at that motel again. Can we meet someplace else? Certainly. As long as it's public with a lot of people around. A girl has to protect herself. You understand. Do you know the Lebec Lodge in the North Valley? No, but I'll find it. I'll be in the bar at 8 o'clock. I'm looking forward to it.
some of these are kind of hard to figure out. Well, maybe we just don't understand abstract art. Well, I read once that according to Delacroix, it's supposed to be the extension of the music of the painting. I guess I'm tone deaf with these. What do you got on Wilson? Well, he was born and raised in Fresno. Spent three years in the Marines. He was given a bad conduct discharge for theft. Where do you go from there? Back home to get married. He lived with his wife, Catherine, for a short period of time. Then he left to drift around the country. He served time in two states for assault and armed robbery. What about his wife? She stayed at home. They were still married at the time of his death. Very interesting. What do you know about Fresno? Well, just that they uh, roll up the sidewalks at 9 o'clock. Well, nobody wants to look at a sidewalk. It's been left out all night. You could try the winery. Why not? Taste the Pinot Noir. Pick a few pigs. Ask a few questions. Find out all you can about Wilson, whether he had any contact with the painter, Lawrence Whitley. I'll get back as soon as I can. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Uh, Jones, is it? I'm Larry Whitley. How do you do? I see you like that piece. It's called Model in Aspic. I hope she can dig her way out. <laughs> I'll give her your message. What uh, did you want to see me about? I understand you were a favorite of Linda Court. She bought some of my painting. I saw them. Evidently, they didn't turn you on. Well, I don't blame you. These aren't the best side of my work, but people like to be confused. I mean, I work up a piece of garbage, and suddenly everyone is turned on to how a sensory appeal must result from an unintelligible meaning. It's a game I play. You don't seem to be enjoying it. Linda liked them. I thought that I could be another Cezanne, but I'd have done anything to please her. Mr. Whitley, it's possible that the man that killed Linda was a hired killer. It could be that her death was a mistake. Her husband might have been the original target. You're saying that somebody wanted him done away with? Whom did you have in mind? Well, if Wilson were alive, I'd ask him. But since he isn't, I'll have to go with the most likely suspect. Me? <laughs> Why? A man who paints something he hates just because that's the way a woman wants it. He might demand something in return. Do you recall the remark, if I can't own you, no one will? I think I phrased that a little better. It wouldn't be necessary for me to do away with Charlie, Mr. Jones, because Linda was planning to divorce him. Well, that's something I hadn't heard. It is quite true. Charlie would have been destroyed. Yes, in addition to losing his wife, he probably lost a good job. Did Charlie know that Linda was going to divorce him? I'm not sure. He might have known about us. Linda was never much for discretion. was closed on Monday. Got your money in the car. Why don't you bring it here? 
Why don't you come with me? Back off. I'll go with you. And the money better be there. I was wrong. They really know how to live up there. You look like you enjoy the wine. Oh, it was all those dinners that got to me. I had to entertain half the women in Fresno to get any information. Did it pay off? <sighs> yeah. I located a neighbor of Catherine Wilson's. She gave me this. That's Mrs. Wilson. Find out anything else? Well, Frank Wilson visited his wife in Fresno two weeks ago. And he left her some money. How much? Almost $2,000. Did she tell her neighbor that? No, the neighbor had a friend who worked in one of the banks. Kathy uh, exchanged all the money for traveler's checks and then drew out all the money in her account. Sounds like she wasn't figuring on coming home soon. Did she accompany Wilson to Los Angeles? No, it seems she left with a boyfriend. A nightclub bouncer named Lee Masters. I don't think he'll be going home either. I think I just read where they found him dead out of Lebec Lodge last night. Evidence indicates victim of hit and run. Kathy Wilson has been having a miserable run of luck with her men. I think I ought to learn all I can about this accident, if that's what it was. Okay, is there anything you want me to do? Excuse me. Get some rest. Thanks, that's very kind. You seem to be feeling a lot better now. Well, I guess it's true, the time heals. I sort of hoped it was because I was here. Back in a minute. I can help you with, Jones? Just want to have a chat. Uh, you sure keep this up nice? That's right. Front bumpers shine like it's brand new, no dents, rust. Well, I like to take care of my things. Buddy, you didn't take as good care of the back bumper. It's showing signs of wear. Well, maybe I'm just not too steady in reverse. Like the old guy back home, he uh, had a car that would only run backwards. He didn't care where he was going, he just wanted to see where he had been. Is that what you came to talk to me about? Well, no. Uh, Mr. Court, did you know that Frank Wilson had a wife? Yeah, lived up in Fresno. He visited her uh, about a week ago and left her a couple thousand dollars for household money. Now, where would he get a sum like that? Some crime, I suppose. Why don't you ask her? She wasn't home. 
Where it is, she's down here in Los Angeles somewhere. Uh, if you hear from her, would you call me? Would you explain to me why I'd hear from her? Well, uh, sometimes wives get a little touchy about their husband getting killed, even if it's for a good cause. I'll be careful. I feel, excuse me, I've got some business to it. Sure. Sure's a nice day for a drive. You have it out today? Just to have it washed. It sure looks nice. change. Yes? Dirty murder. Well, I figured I hadn't heard the last of you. Oh, you have. You have because the police can take it from here. I'm calling them. It's not going to get you any money. I'm not in business anymore. You're too dangerous. Oh, yes, you are, lady. You're still in business or you wouldn't be calling me here. Price has gone up to 50000 It'll take time to raise that. And it'll take time for me to figure out a payoff where you can't get your hands on me. There's no problem. I can't afford to hurt anyone else. Oh, you can't afford not to. Looks like pretty hard work. <sighs> yeah, but it's shaping up. Been on it since early this morning. Mr. Court been down to look it over? No, he drove out without giving a glance. He seemed to have other things on his mind. Oh, yeah, I guess he was worried about his car. He told me he had an accident. He kind of banged it up. Yeah, front end. <laughs> Looked like he used a bumper for a can opener. <laughs> uh, don't work too hard. Okay. Get the money and stay by your phone. Take a look over here, Barnaby. This time, Mark. This could have been made last night. Looks like two cars were here, Lieutenant. Say, uh, did you happen to find a motel key on Masters? What makes you think that? Just a guess. You had to stay somewhere down here. I figured he didn't buy a house. Well, you're close. We found a receipt on him from the Hollywood Motel. What'd they have to say? Well, he checked in there two days ago with the young woman. Is that a fact? We got a description, but haven't been able to locate her yet. She probably left town. Uh, Hard, I know. What? Being without someone you've loved for a long time. But I think anyone can go on. He knows people still care for him. Won't you let me help? You're a kind and gentle girl, Terry. Maybe the only one I've ever known. People can't help me now. Somewhere in the world, there's a place where fat, old ex-football players can find some peace. I'd like to dump everything and go look for it. But I'm afraid. Of what? Myself. See, all my life, operators smarter than me have used me. He made me out to be some kind of a god because I could run past people. Then one day they said, you'll have to make it another way. Only I don't know another way. So the second team moved in. The vultures waiting to pick at the bones. I don't understand. A wife that 
was amused like I was a toy and got bored when the paint rubbed off. A company that put me in public relations with a fancy office put me on exhibit. You'll have to forget about the past. It'll only make you unhappy. You see, that's the tough part. It's tough giving up anything. I don't care how it was gained. Would it be easier if you had someone you could trust? Do you think it's possible? I think anything's possible. If you try hard enough for it, maybe we could try for it together. Would you excuse me? Hello. You know the Bayshore Bowling Alley? Yes? We'll be there at 5 o'clock. Put the money in one of the daily rent lockers at the west end of the building. And? There's a phone booth in Van Nuys. In the parking lot of a market at the corner of Chandler and Ventura. Tape the key under the shelf. Chandler and Ventura. I'll send somebody to pick up the key. You follow him and I'll be right on the phone to the police. I don't know. It sounds all right, but, uh... Stanley, everything is going to be fine. There's nothing to it, Stanley. And you, you, you pick up a fast $500 just for bringing the package home to Mama. Nothing's going to go wrong. No way. Everything's going to go right for you and for me. I don't know what I can tell you. I haven't already told the police. He and the woman registered here on the 29th. The police said his name was Masters. Is that the way he registered? No. He used the name of Scott Waters. Is this the woman who was with him? Yep. That's her. Well, thank you very much for your trouble. Are the police looking for her? They may not be the only ones. Long time, Mr. J. How have you been? Good. You? Ah, same old six and sevens, you know. Got any tough ones? Yep. What was Zach Wheat's lifetime batting average? Zach Wheat? <laughs> 317. 132 home runs. 1,248 runs batted in. Too easy for you. Have to try football. Hey, I hear Charlie Court's a customer here. Yeah, he used to be quite a regular. All right. What was his college touchdown total? None. Came off Sandlot. You mean he never played anything with pro? No. Wait a minute. He did play some service ball. Where? Marines, I think. I had a team stationed up at Cherry Point. Cherry Point, North Carolina? Yeah, about 10 years ago. Check it with Frank Wilson's service record. I'll get right on it. A few things to check, and I noticed that all the other lockers were rented except the one I took. Yeah, a guy came in a little while ago, and he he wanted to roll a dime. I saw him rent all the lockers. 
He left, came back in a few minutes, and he, uh, he opened one of them. Is there a place near here where they make duplicate keys? Uh, right down the block. Thanks. All of the Marine base at Cherry Point. Frank Wilson was stationed there at the same time as Charlie Court, but they were in different units. Did uh, Wilson play football? No, but he was the equipment manager for the team. That means he did have some contact with Court. All right, that establishes the tie-up between the two of them. Any word on uh, Wilson's wife? Uh, not yet, but I think we better get to her before Court does. Thank you very much. Anything? I finally located the only friend she has here in Los Angeles, but she hasn't seen her. The way I figured, Kathy was probably blackmailing court. If I were playing that game, I'd start heading out the minute I got the money. Well, I checked all the airlines. There's no record of a Catherine Wilson making any reservations. Waters. What? That's the name she checked into the motel under. Catherine Waters. Or Mrs. Scott Waters. Waters, 11 a.m. flight to Hawaii on Consolidated Airlines, and she left a callback number. Let's see where this number is. Any more friends around? Please. I, I, I promise I will not bother you again. <laughs>
That was a clever payoff you arranged. How did you find out about the duplicate key at the bowling alley? I noticed all the lockers were rented except one. Then the cashier told me about your boyfriend. Now, he shouldn't have come back so soon after he had that key made. What did you do to him? There won't be any more trouble. More important is what am I going to do with you? You fire that gun, it'll raise everybody in the place. Come on. No, oh, please. You're coming with me whether you no. like it or not. Stairs. Holy court! Get up those stairs! Go on! Move! Move! concerned with her welfare. Come on, Charlie, it's all over. Never in the world would I have thought it was Charles. You're sure? He gave a full confession to the police. Still, I can't help but be sorry for him. Even though he did do a terrible thing. Poor Linda. You could never tell where marriage will lead. No, sometimes it's a gamble. Still, it's better to gamble than be alone. Miss Park? I myself have gambled several times. What about you, Mr. Jones? Just once. I'm a widower. Oh, well. Well, don't you think only once is... Really not giving it a chance. Bartley Jones office, may I help you? Yes, uh, yes, I'll catch the first plane. Excuse me, ma'am. An emergency. Oh. Well. I hope you have. He's a charming man. Does he own a dinner jacket? Oh, I don't think so. I... Oh, well, we can rent him one. <laughs> bye bye. Does picking up your laundry mean an emergency? When a lady like that gets to itch to gamble again. <laughs> 